Islamic eschatology is the branch of Islamic theology concerning the end of the world, and the day of resurrection. After that, known as Yam al Qiyama Arabic, Yam al Qiyamt IPA, Jamu al Qiyamah, the day of resurrection, or Yam ad Din, Yam al Din Arabic pronunciation, Jamu d, dn, the day of judgment, when the annihilation of all life will be followed by its resurrection and judgment by God. When al Qiyamah will happen is not specified, but according to prophecy, primarily elaborated by Hadith literature, there are major and minor signs that will foretell its coming. Many verses in the Quran mention the Last Judgment, the main subject of Surat al Qiyamah is the resurrection. The Great Tribulation is described in the Hadith and commentaries of the ulama, including al Ghazali, ibn Kathir, ibn Majah, Muhammad al Bukhari, and ibn Khuzaymah. The Day of Judgment is also known as the Day of Reckoning, the Last Day, and the Hour. Al ah, unlike the Quran, the Hadith contains several events, happening before the Day of Judgment, which are described as several minor signs and twelve major signs. During this period, terrible corruption and chaos would rule the earth, caused by the Masi ad Dajjal, the Antichrist in Islam. Then a messianic figure will appear, defeating the Dajjal and establish a period of peace, liberating Islam from cruelty. These events will be followed by a time of serenity when people live according to religious values. Like other Abrahamic religions, Islam teaches that there will be a resurrection of the dead followed by a final tribulation and eternal division of the righteous and wicked. Islamic apocalyptic literature describing Armageddon is often known as Fitna, al Malama al Kubra or Geba in Shi'a Islam. The righteous are rewarded with the pleasures of Jannah paradise, while the unrighteous are punished in Jahannam hell. <inaudible> Articles of faith The resurrection and final judgment are fundamental beliefs in Islam. According to the Quran, without them, the creation of humanity would be in vain, thus the Day of Judgment, al qiyamah also known as the Day of Reckoning or Resurrection, the Last Day, or the Hour is one of the six articles of faith in Sunni Islam, and one of seven in Shia Islam. <laughs> Sources Two main sources in Islamic scripture discuss the Last Judgment and the tribulation associated with it, the Quran, which is viewed in Islam as infallible, and the Hadith, or sayings of the Prophet. Hadith are viewed with more flexibility due to the late compilation of the sayings in written form, 200 years after the death of Muhammad. The Last Judgment and the Tribulation have also been discussed in the commentaries of ulama such as al-Ghazali, Ibn Kathir, and Muhammad al-Bukhari. Topic. Last judgment in the Quran Topic. Interpretations of the Quran yield the following specifics The time is known only to God. Even Muhammad cannot bring it forward. Those who have been dead, when resurrected, will believe that a short time has passed between death and resurrection. Nothing will remain except God. God will resurrect all, even if they have turned to stone or iron. Those that have accepted false deities will suffer in the afterlife. Topic. Resurrection theories Topic. Although Islamic philosophers and scholars were in general agreement on a bodily resurrection after death, however their opinions differ in regard what bodily resurrection will be like. Some of the theories are the following. The return to the same material body, someone had during lifetime, that will be restored. Conjunction of the soul with a mythali body, which is congenial to the worlds of Barzakh and the Akira. Resurrection with a Herculeati body, accordingly a second invisible body, that survives death. Topic. Signs of the end time Topic. In Islam, a number of major and minor signs foretell the end of days. There is debate over whether they could occur concurrently or must be at different points in time, although Islamic scholars typically divide them into three major periods. Sexual immorality appears among people to such an extent that they commit it openly, except that they will be afflicted by plagues and diseases unknown to their forefathers. 
People cheat in weights and measures business, trades, etc. and are stricken with famine, calamity, and oppression as a result. They withhold charity and hoard their wealth, and rain is withheld from the sky from them, there is rain only for animals. They break their covenant with God and His messenger and God enables their enemies to overpower them and take some of what is in their hands. God causes those who do not live according to His book to fight among themselves. Topic. Minor signs Topic. The coming of fitna tribulations and removal of kushu fearfulness of God, taqwa, reverence, etc. The coming of thirty dajals, each one of them presuming himself an apostle of God. A person passing by a grave might say to another, I wish it were my abode. The loss of honesty, and authority put in the hands of those who do not deserve it. The loss of knowledge and the prevalence of religious ignorance. Frequent, sudden, and unexpected deaths. Increase in pointless killings. Acceleration of time. Rejection of hadith. The spread of reba usury, interest, zina adultery, fornication, and the drinking of alcohol. Widespread acceptance of music. Pride and competition in the decoration of mosques. Women will increase in number and men will decrease in number so much so that fifty women will be looked after by one man. Abundance of earthquakes. Frequent occurrences of disgrace, distortion, and defamation. When people wish to die because of the severe trials and tribulations that they are suffering. Jews fighting Muslims. When paying charity becomes a burden. Nomads will compete in the construction of very tall buildings. Women will appear naked despite their being dressed. People will seek knowledge from misguided and straying scholars. Liars will be believed, honest people disbelieved, and faithful people called traitors. The death of righteous, knowledgeable people. The emergence of indecency, obscenity, and enmity among relatives and neighbors. The rise of idolatry and polytheists in the community. The Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. The land of the Arabs will return to being a land of rivers and fields. The Romans will form a majority amongst people. People will increasingly earn money by unlawful haram ways. There will be much rain but little vegetation. Evil people will be expelled from al madina Wild animals will communicate with humans, and humans will communicate with objects. Lightning and thunder will become more prevalent. There will be a special greeting for people of distinction. Trade will become so widespread that a woman will help her husband in business. No truly honest man will remain and no one will be trusted. Only the worst people will be left, they will not know any good nor forbid any evil i.e. no one will say there is no God but Allah. Nations will call each other to destroy Islam by any and every means. Islamic knowledge will be passed on, but no one will follow it correctly. Muslim rulers will come who do not follow the guidance and tradition of the Sunnah. Some of their men will have the hearts of devils in a human body. Stinginess will become more widespread and honorable people will perish. A man will obey his wife and disobey his mother, and treat his friend kindly while shunning his father. Voices will be raised in the mosques. The leader of a people will be the worst of them. People will treat a man with respect because they fear the evil he could do. Much wine will be drunk. Muslims shall fight against a nation who wear shoes made of hair and with faces like hammered shields, with red complexions and small eyes. The emergence of the Sufiani within the Syria region. The truce and joint Roman-Muslim campaign against a common enemy, followed by al malama al-Kubra Armageddon, a Roman versus Muslim war. The black standard will come from Khorasan, nothing shall turn them back until it is planted in Jerusalem. Quran will be forgotten and no one will recall its verses. All Islamic knowledge will be lost to the extent that people will not say, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah, but instead old people will babble without understanding, God, God. People will fornicate in the streets, like donkeys. The first trumpet blow will be sounded by Israfil, all that is in heaven and earth will be stunned and die except what God wills, and silence will envelop everything for forty undetermined periods of time. There will be disagreement concerning succession. Then a man will emerge from Medina. 
He will hurry to Makkah, and the people of Makkah will come out to him and urge him and try to force him to accept the bayah. Mecca will be attacked and the Kaaba will be destroyed. A pleasant breeze will blow from the south that shall cause all believers to die peacefully. The moon will split in two, but non-believers will insist it isn't happening for real. There are two groups of Ummah whom God will free from the fire, the group that invades India Ghazwa -e -hind, and the group that will be with Isa bin Maryam. Topic. One of the last of the minor signs, and which will signal the coming of the ten major signs. Topic. The appearance of the Mahdi. Topic. Major signs. Topic. Following the second period, the third will be marked by the ten major signs known as Alamatu. S. Sa. A. Al Kubra. The major signs of the end. They are as follows The false messiah Antichrist, Masih ad Dajjal shall appear with great powers as a one eyed man with his right eye blind and deformed like a grape. Although believers will not be deceived, he will claim to be God, to hold the keys to heaven and hell, and will lead many astray. In reality, his heaven is hell, and his hell is heaven. The Dajjal will be followed by 70,000 Jews of Isfahan wearing Persian shawls. The return of Isa, Jesus, from the fourth sky, to kill Dajjal. Ya, Huj and Ma, Huj, Gog and Magog, a Japhetic tribe of vicious beings who had been imprisoned by Dhul Karnain, will break out. They will ravage the earth, drink all the water of Lake Tiberias, and kill all believers in their way. Isa, Imam al-Mahdi, and the believers with them will go to the top of a mountain and pray for the destruction of Gog and Magog. God eventually will send disease and worms to wipe them out. A huge black cloud of smoke will cover the earth. Dabit al-Ard, or the beast that will come out of the ground to talk to people. The sun will rise from the west. Three sinkings of the earth, one in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. The second blow of the trumpet will be sounded, the dead will return to life, and, out of Yemen, will come a fire that shall gather all to Mashar al Chayama, the gathering for judgment. Topic. Major figures Topic. Topic. The Mahdi Topic. Mahdi Arabic, Mahdi means guided one, is a messianic figure in Islamic tradition. He makes his first appearance in the Hadiths and is thought as the first sign of the third period. Hadiths state that he will be a descendant of Muhammad through Muhammad's daughter Fatima and cousin Ali. The Mahdi will be looked upon to kill al-Dajjal, to end the disintegration of the Muslim community, and to prepare for the reign of Jesus, who will rule for a time thereafter. The Mahdi will fulfill his prophetic mission, a vision of justice and peace, before submitting to Jesus. Rule. The physical features of Mahdi are described in the Hadith. He will be of Arab complexion, of average height, with a big forehead, large eyes, and a sharp nose. He will have a mole on his cheek, the sign of the Prophet on his shoulder, and be recognized by the Caliphate while he sits in his own home. As written by Abu Dawud. Our Mahdi will have a broad forehead and a pointed prominent nose. He will fill the earth with justice as it is filled with injustice and tyranny. He will rule for seven years. In some accounts, after the seven years of peace, God will send a cold wind causing everyone with the smallest measure of human kindness or faith, to die and carry them straight to heaven. Therefore, only the wicked will remain and be victims of terrible animals and Satan, until the day of resurrection. Otherwise, the Mahdi will kill Satan before the last day, in most Shia accounts. Though the predictions of the duration of his rule differ, Hadith are consistent in describing that God will perfect him in a single night, imbuing him with inspiration and wisdom, and his name will be announced from the sky. The Mahdi will bring back worship of true Islamic values, and bring the Ark of the Covenant to light. He will conquer Istanbul and Mount Dalam and will regard Jerusalem and the Dome as his home. His banner will be that of the Prophet Muhammad, black and unstitched, with a halo. Furled since the death of Muhammad, the banner will unfurl when the Mahdi appears. He will be helped by angels and others that will prepare the way for him. He will understand the secrets of Abjad. Amr bin Shu'ayb learned from his grandfather that the Messenger of God said, 
In Du al Qidah Islamic month, there will be fight among the tribes, Muslim pilgrims will be looted and there will be a battle in Mina in which many people will be slain and blood will flow until it runs over the Jamaratul Aqba one of the three stone pillars at Mina. The man they seek will flee and will be found between the Rukan a corner of the Kaaba containing the black stone and the Maqam of Prophet Abraham near Kaaba. He will be forced to accept people's bayah being chosen as a leader, caliph. The number of those offering bayah will be the same as the number of the people of Badr Muslim fighters who participated in the Battle of Badr at time of Prophet Muhammad. Then, the dweller of heaven and the dweller of the earth will be pleased with him. <laughs> Sunni and Shiite perspectives on the Mahdi Topic. Sunni and Shi'a Islam have different beliefs regarding the identity of Mahdi. Historically, Sunni Islam considers religious authority as being derived from the Caliph, who was appointed by the companions of Muhammad at his death. The Sunnis view the Mahdi as the successor of Muhammad. The Mahdi is expected to arrive to rule the world and re establish righteousness. Some Sunnis share a belief that there may be no actual Mahdi, but that a series of mujadid will instead lead to an Islamic revolution of a renewal of faith and avoidance of deviation from God's path. Sunni tradition has attributed such intellectual and spiritual attributes to numerous Muslims at the end of each Muslim century from the origin of Islam to the present day. This classical interpretation is favored by Sunni scholars like Ghazali and Ibn Taymiyyah. Contrarily, Shi'a Islam vested religious authority in those of the bloodline of Muhammad, favoring his cousin and son by marriage, Ali. Ali was appointed the first Imam, and according to Twelver interpretation, he was followed by eleven more. Muhammad al-Mahdi, otherwise known as the Twelfth Imam, went into hiding in 873 at the age of four. His father was al Askari, who had been murdered, and so he was hidden from the authorities of the Abbasid Caliphate. He maintained contact with his followers until 940, when he entered the occultation. Twelverism believes that al-Mahdi is the current Imam, and will emerge at the end of the current age. Some scholars say that, although unnoticed by others present, the Mahdi of Twelver Islam continues to make an annual pilgrimage while he resides outside of Mecca. In contradistinction, Sunni Islam foresees him as a separate and new person. The present Ayatollahs of Iran see themselves as joint caretakers of the office of the Imam until he returns. The Mahdi is not described in the Quran, only in Hadith, with scholars suggesting he arose when Arabian tribes were settling in Syria under Muawiyah. They anticipated the Mahdi who will lead the rising people of the Yemen back to their country in order to restore the glory of their lost Himyarite kingdom. It was believed that he would eventually conquer Constantinople. Topic. Claimants to being the Mahdi Topic. Throughout history, there have been multiple claimants to the role of Mahdi, who by their pious deeds acquired followings. One of these men, Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, was said to have judgment and character over rival caliphs, and mysteries of his death arose in the 8th century. It was believed he had in fact not died and would one day return as the Mahdi. The sect of Madhavis arose as followers of another claimant, Muhammad Mahdi of Janpur, in the 15th century. Furthermore, a potential Mahdi, Muhammad Ahmad of Sudan, was believed to hold the title following his self-proclamation, in 1881, and stand against the Turco-Egyptian government, as well as the British. Additionally, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Punjab claimed to be the Mahdi during the same period as Muhammad Ahmad, but was considered a heretic by Orthodox Muslims, though he amassed a substantial following of 10 to 20 million and is credited with founding the Ahmadiyya sect, which, today, is established in over 200 countries and territories of the world. Two 19th century religious movements linked to Shi, Ism, Babism, and the Baha. I faith believe that their prophets, the Bab d. 1850 and Baha law, fulfilled the prophecy. The Bab is thought to be the return of the Twelfth Imam, who is also the Mahdi according to the Twelver tradition, and Baha law that of Jesus. 
Since the Baha'is now are a successful international religion with possibly as many as six million followers, their concept of the fulfillment of Islamic prophecy now extends well beyond the Islamic world. Isa. Isa is the Arabic name for Jesus, and his return is considered the third major sign of the last days the second being the appearance of Jesus's nemesis Masi ad Dajjal. Although Muhammad is the preeminent prophet in Islam, Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, and so is Idris Enoch, who is said not to have died but to have been raised up by God. Thus, in accordance with post-Quranic hadith, Jesus conceivably will return to earth as a just judge before the Day of Judgment. As written in hadith, Abu Huraira narrates that the Messenger of God said, By him in whose hands my soul rests. It is definitely close in that time that Isa, son of Maryam descends amongst you as a just ruler. He will break the cross, kill the swine and abolish jazia. And money will abound in such excess that no one will accept it. Hadith reference both the Mahdi and Isa simultaneously and the return of the Mahdi will coincide with the return of Isa, who will descend from the heavens in Al-Quds at dawn. The two will meet, and the Mahdi will lead the people in Farj prayer. After the prayer, they will open a gate to the west and encounter Masi ad Dajjal. After the defeat of ad Dajjal, Isa will lead a peaceful 40-year reign until his death. He will be buried in a tomb beside Muhammad in Medina. Though the two certainly differ regarding their role and persona in Islamic eschatology, the figures of the Mahdi and Isa are ultimately inseparable, according to the Prophet. Though Isa is said to descend upon the world once again, the Mahdi will already be present. What will be your reaction when the son of Mary Jesus descends and your imam is from among yourselves? Sahih Muslim, Bab Nuzal. Isa, Volume 2, Sahih Bukhari, Kitab Bad. al Kalk wa Nuzal Isa, Volume 4. Masi ad Dajjal Masi ad Dajjal does not appear in the Quran but is a prominent figure in Hadith and Islamic eschatology as a whole. He appears gruesome and is blind in his right eye. His one eye is thought to be a symbol that correlates with how single-minded he is in achieving his goal of converting Muslims to his side. al Dajjal has the intention of gaining followers through his miracle working and apparent wealth and generosity. To resist such munificence is a test for true believers of Islam, who have been warned about al-Dajjal's power, and who must resist his material temptations. It is thought that al-Dajjal will appear prior to the Day of Judgment, where he will engage in an epic battle with, and be killed by, Jesus. Al-Dajjal functions symbolically as a key cog in the overall Islamic eschatological picture, which emphasizes the world coming to an end, of good finally triumphing over evil, and of the remarkable events that will prefigure the replacement of the mortal world with a more authentic form of existence in the afterlife. Various Muslim political movements use the concept of al-Dajjal to comment on contemporary events, and often identify him with opposing regimes or other worldly forces that they consider as harmful to Islam. Topic. Ya. J U J and Ma. J U J. Topic. The fourth major sign of the end time will be that the wall which imprisons the nations of Ya. J U J and Ma. J U J will break, and they will surge forth. Some Islamic scholars, such as Imran Nazar Hossein, believe the wall began to crack during the life of Muhammad. This is supported in the Hadith, when the Prophet mentions that. A hole has been made in the wall containing the Yajuj and Majuj, indicating the size of the hole with his thumb and index finger. Their release will occur 40 years prior to the Last Judgment. But when Ya, Huj and Ma, Huj are let loose and they rush headlong down every hill and mountain, they will ravage the earth. Ultimately, God will send worms and insects to destroy them. Topic. Major events Topic. Topic. Destruction of the Kaaba and the Beast of the Earth Topic. Before Doomsday, a thin ruler from Ethiopia, with short legs, will attack Mecca and destroy the Kaaba. Another sign is the appearance of the Daba Tul Ard, or the Beast of the Earth. The entire world will be engulfed by Dukan or smoke, for 40 days, and there will be three huge earthquakes. 
The Quran will be taken to heaven and even the Hafiz will not recall its verses. Finally, a pleasant breeze will blow that shall cause all believers to die, but infidels and sinners will remain alive. A fire will start, from Hadramaut in Yemen, that will gather all the people of the world in the land of Mashar, and al qiyamah will commence. Resurrection of the dead in the Quran, Barzakh Arabic, Bresk is the intermediate state in which nafs of the deceased are held between realities to rest with loved ones until Qiyamah. The eighth sign is a breeze bearing a pleasant scent, which will emanate from Yemen, causing the Aliyah, Sulaha and the pious to die peacefully once they inhale it. After the believers die, there will be a period of 120 years during which the world will contain only kafirs, sinners, oppressors, liars, and adulterers, and there will be a reversion to idolatry. The ninth sign is the rising of the sun from the west after a long night. After midday, the sun will set again. According to Hadith, Abu Huraira states that the Messenger of God saw as said, the hour will not be established until the sun rises from the west and when the people see it they will have faith. But that will be the time when believing of the soul, that will have not believed before that time, will not benefit it. The final signs will be Nakatu, El Ula, when a trumpet will be sounded for the first time, and which will result in the death of the remaining sinners. Then there will be a period of forty years, after which the eleventh sign is the sounding of a second trumpet to signal the resurrection as Ba. As Ba. Da. El Mat. As written in the Quran. The trumpet will just be sounded, when all that are in the heavens and on earth will swoon, except such as it will please God to exempt. Then will a second one be sounded, when, behold, they will be standing and looking on. All will be naked and running to the place of gathering, while the enemies of God will be traveling on their faces with their legs upright. Finally, there will be no more injustice, surely God does not do injustice to the weight of an atom, and if it is a good deed he multiplies it and gives from himself a great reward. Topic. Separation of the righteous and the damned at al -Qiyamah. Topic. At divine judgment, each person's book of deeds will be read, in which every small and great thing is recorded, but with actions before adolescence omitted. Records shall be given with the right hand if they are good, and the left if they are evil. Even the smallest acts will not be ignored, then shall anyone who has done an atom s weight of good, see it, and anyone who has done an atom's weight of evil, shall see it. This will be followed by perfect, divine, and merciful justice. The age of the hereafter, or the rest of eternity, is the final stage after the day of judgment, when all will receive their judgment from God. Indeed, those who believed and those who were Jews or Christians or Sabaeans before Prophet Muhammad those among them who believed in God and the last day and did righteousness, will have their reward with their Lord, and no fear will there be concerning them, nor will they grieve. The dead will stand in a grand assembly, awaiting a scroll detailing their righteous deeds, sinful acts, and ultimate judgment. Muhammad will be the first to be resurrected, if one did good deeds, one would go to Jannah, and if unrighteous, would go to Jahannam. Punishments will include adab, or severe pain, and kizi or shame. There will also be a punishment of the grave for those who disbelieved between death and the resurrection. <laughs> Islamic eschatology in literature Ibn al-Nafis wrote of Islamic eschatology in Theologus Autodidactus circa AD 1270, where he used reason, science, and early Islamic philosophy to explain how he believed al-Qiyama would unfold, told in the form of a theological fiction novel. Imran Nazar Hossein wrote numerous books that deal with Islamic eschatology Ilmu Akir al-Zaman, Knowledge of the Later Days, among which the most famous is Jerusalem in the Quran. See also Topic. Shia eschatology Signs of the reappearance of Muhammad al-Mahdi Yamadan Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. Sources. 
Fath al-Bari from Sahih al-Bukhari by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Esposito, John, The Oxford Dictionary of Islam, Oxford University Press, 2003, ISBN 0-19-512558-4. Richard C. Martin, Said Amir Arjamand, Marsha Hermanson, Abdukader Tayyab, Rochelle Davis, John Albert Vole, Encyclopedia of Islam and the Muslim World, Macmillan Reference Books, 2003, ISBN 978-0028656038.